We got a loaded video, and this is how this video will be structured. One, the MMTLP FINRA bombshell just came out. Huge, huge smoking gun here. Two, the brewing short squeeze that's gearing up for a potential bigger move this week. Three, we got updates on AI quantum stocks. And at the very end of the video, I got two retail favorites that you're going to want to see. And I wanted to start this video off by telling you this is not financial advice. This is not advice to buy, hold, or sell any security. I'm just giving you information, due diligence, entertainment purposes only. But I wanted to start this video off by giving Perma Bears a reality check. A reality check to the investors that are long term bearish on the overall market. The average bull market period lasted four. 0.5 years with a 153% total return. The average bear market lasted just 11.3 months with a 32% total loss. Now, that does not mean your individual stocks will perform that well. And your penny stocks, many penny stocks actually end up losing 90% of their value, which is why we just trade a lot of these penny stocks for quick returns to, you know, maybe even take those returns and invest them in VOL, like an ETF, a SPY, an ETF. But this information is going off the S&P 500. But in the long run, bears might sound smart every now and then, you know, for a year, you know, every now and then. But bulls actually make the big money in the long run. You have Michael Burry saying, I was wrong to say sell. This dude's the biggest flip flip-flopper I've ever seen in my life. It's really hard to take this guy seriously. I know he's probably just trying to get more attention on his name but it's hard to take them seriously at this point. Something that I found interesting is that Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa are working on developing a new gold standard currency to replace the US dollar. Do you think this is going to be successful? Do you think Russia and China are going to be able to do this? First of all, I have to put light on the MMTLP situation. We got a smoking gun here. We got a bombshell. Emails were leaked. You know, this is hypothetical. I'm just saying that because, you know, I, I can't 100% confirm the, if these are real, but they look like they're real. I'm just saying that to protect myself, protect myself from FINRA, the SEC, what it is. But we got information on what was going on behind the scene leading up to this MMTLP halt. Shout out to Junk Savvy, all the people on MMTLP Twitter. I love the information that they're posting. It's crazy, really, really good information. What we have here is what appears to be a leaked email sent from Sam Dratty to multiple other members that work for FINRA. Remember, FINRA and OTC markets are responsible for halting trading of MMTLP two days before the record date, completely taking away those two essential trading days from MMTLP shareholders. Sam Dratty is the guy that sent this email, is the senior vice president for multiple sectors at FINRA. He has been at FINRA since 2007, and before that, he served more than seven years working at the SEC. This guy has been working for the SEC or FINRA for pretty much most of his life. Here's the email. He says that it looks like MMTLP and the MMAT and MMTLP matter has now hit my fraud team's radar screen. I know you spoke spoken to Patty, our general counsel's office, but was wondering if it made sense for my fraud team to have a conversation directly with you and your folks working on the matter so we're not duplicating efforts. We're looking at the two issuers from a fraud manipulation angle and in fact, blue sheeting both MMAT and MMTLP as we speak. Now, they mentioned Patty here. Patty, is the Vice President of Market Operations for FINRA Transparency. She also manages OTC corporate action and dividend announcements. So she manages the dividends, like MMTLP, the Next Bridge Hydrocarbons dividend spinoff, and OTC corporate actions, FINRA Transparency. Now, what's crazy is that email up here. This email talking about MMTLP being on their fraud radar screen is from November 29th, 2021. They had... MMTLP on the fraud radar for an entire year and didn't say anything to investors. Nothing. Nothing. You had to push FINRA to even put out a report on what happened with MMTLP. You had to push them like crazy. And they didn't want to tell investors. Back then, when they knew it was on their fraud radar, you know, they just decided to halt it a few days before the record date with zero warning to investors. Emails from December 2nd before the halt show that FINRA sent out several tips to the SEC that they were aware of the manip manipulation of MMTLP, you know, the shorting, whatever was going on there before the halt. And they could have sent a notice to investors that the halt would occur on December 8th. It's not like they just woke up one day, something went wrong in the market, and they had to halt it. They were planning this ahead. They knew they were going to do it. They were going to do it for a long time. And they knew it since 2021 that it was a possibility. They just never told anybody. But yet, 
They were, you know, they try to protect investors, but they're leaving us in the dark, letting us lose everything. It's crazy. FINRA received complaints and threats, and they even asked their team to work from home for the entire week following the halt. Now, MT MMTLP investors are asking for FINRA employees to blow the whistle and come forward. You know, overall, this is just really sad to see. Uh, FINRA themselves are claiming they're making sure the broker dealer industry operates fairly and honestly. I don't see any honesty in holding back information from investors that could completely change someone's financial situation. If they were aware of all if they were aware of the whole MMTLP situation, they were probably aware that there was a huge they were obviously aware that there is a huge retail investor base and a lot of people have a lot of money in it, but they didn't do anything about it. They just halted it. Boom. It sucks. We'll cover this in, we'll cover more of that in videos this week. And first stock ticker BRDS at an 89 million market cap up 10% on the previous trading day. This is a newer short squeeze play that has been trading quite well over the past few trading days since we've been covering it. On Friday last week, which is usually a much lower volume day overall for the market and especially penny stocks, BRDS still made a significant move. From the low of the day at 22 cents to the high of the day of 32 cents, it made an overall 40% move from the low to the high. Yes, I've been talking about this in the Discord since 11 cents. You know, we reported on this in the Discord since the first insider buy, but we even caught a recent bottom even after the big run-up. I sent out a text message to, to Discord members' cell phones on Thursday when we had the huge wick down to 21 22 cents. I timed it perfectly. We got the dip, and you can see if you join the Discord, you're going to get text messages like this. You got to sign up once you get in the Discord. And if you want Discord penny stock pings, penny stock text messages sent to your phone, options alerts, and a stock baller room filled of 10 to 20 penny stock traders, join with the link in the top pinned comment. On Friday, which was supposed to be our low volume day for BRDS, we ended up having a quite impressive volume of over 100 million, higher than the 60 million on Thursday. BRDS does have the fundamentals, the catalyst, and the slowly building shareholder base to make a larger move higher, but they need to keep dilution low like they have done in the past. When a meme stock is running in today's market, if a company starts diluting even a little bit, when shareholders find out that that dilution has occurred, it will cause tons of panic. It's just how it is. Even if they only diluted, let's say, 10 million shares, which is not a lot for BRDS, it wouldn't really affect the run too much. But if retail finds out they're, they're starting to, to dilute, they will get rid of their shares rapidly. Retail will sell. That hasn't happened yet. We're looking good right now. You can see they haven't diluted much in the past three years, but that could change. We never know. It's risky, but we know that. The short interest has been st staying steady at around 13%. Shorts have not decided to cover, and new shorts have not decided to open a new short position. Maybe just a small bit of shorts with that 1.96% short interest increase, but it's been st staying around 12%. 13% short interest. The cost to borrow is low, and I would like to see that cost to borrow start to rise as the stock gets more volume. Short squeeze opportunities do much better when the cost to borrow is high. Insiders have bought a total of 1.6 million shares over the past three weeks. We're expecting another 500,000 share potential insider buy. It says, it says it directly in their most recent PR, and that's going to be a buy from the new board of directors, which is going to be our next catalyst here. The chart is looking quite strong right now. There has been a clear pattern that we usually run up in pre-market, followed by a bit of a dump at open. You can see it's been happening, you know, a little run up pre-market dump, run up, you know, and then it, and then it bounces, and then a run up pre-market dump, and then it bounces, you know, a little run up pre-market, a little bit of a dump there on Friday, and then it bounces. But we've been seeing that consistently. And we do have support right now at $0.27 cents at, and $0.25. Cents. But if we get below that $0.25 cents level, look for ads in the $0.21 to $0.22 cent range. But watch for the pre-market move, you know, the move higher, followed by the dip at open, which open is at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, if you don't already know that. I'm going to be looking for that support at $0.25 cents as well. Now, let's talk about ticker AI. What an absolutely impressive run from C3 AI on Friday, up 21%, hitting a new 52-week high of 34.29. Huge run, absolutely incredible. I love to see this. I even alert, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. We've been talking about C3 AI for a very long time, since under $15, but I alerted all you know, in the discord of all of the big artificial intelligence runners just about a week before the big run again, March 21st, right there, the alert. And I even alerted the quantum plays, which perform very well on Friday. We're getting in early on these stocks. We see, you know, we see this build up beforehand. We look at the volume, we look at all the, the fundamentals, what's going on, you know, in terms of news. 
And we find these runners before most people. It's just, it, is what, it is what it is. We're doing it. You know, AI, BBAI, so on, GFAI, and then we alerted IO and Q, QBTSQ. We've been on the game, okay? What I really believe sparked this AI run was Elon Musk and tech leaders called for a temporary pause on AI development. You might think, you know, that's bad news. But in my opinion, whenever the government or big players in a sector want to start regulating or pushing back on an asset, or the development of a product, the people end up wanting e that even more nowadays. Like XRP, for example, it's under SEC investigation, but it remains a top 10 cryptocurrency. This is because people want what the SEC does not want you to have. That's my opinion. I think that's what happened. There was also some unusual call option activity of a trade of 460K on Friday. The short interest on AI is 26% crazy high for a $3.7 billion company. There's no doubt that shorts were covering on Friday. Carisdale Capital, this is a, a short report company that shorted CEI back in the day. They made a ton of money shorting CEI. They shorted at like f anywhere from two to four dollars. Obviously, it's down to like eight cents now. Well, then they reverse split, whatever. They made a lot of money on that. But they're potentially getting smoked on their AI short position right now. I think they initially started their short position short position the day after they beat earnings when it was about, you know, I think it was like almost $30. It did come down. So if they covered when it came down previously, then they, then they profited. But if they're still holding that short position, they're getting smoked right now. The C3 AI move is the exact reason why I made the video last month covering all the small cap AI stocks. If you use that watch list and added it to your trading broker, put that watch list on a watch list on your broker, you could have easily caught a quick trade in something like BBAI or SOUN or GFAI. Those two small, those are the two small caps, BBAI and SOUN. Those move the most when AI gets hot. And BBAI ran 23%, SOUN ran 40%. Then we had the micro cap artificial intelligence list with GFAI, FRGT, you know, Mark, some of these big AI movers on that watch list. GFAI pushed 50%, another 23% after hours. That was on the top of the, the micro cap list. Just be careful and don't chase all these small cap AI stocks. If C3 AI starts to fall, it's likely the small caps will follow. So make sure you're watching the C3 AI price action. But if C3 continues a big run from here, it could get wild for some other for some other AI stocks. If it gets wild, look at AMST. It's a micro cap AI stock that's been getting big volume, only at a 6.6 .6 million market cap right now. On the front page of their site, they talk about chat GPT and AI. People might find that and say, you know, this is an AI play. It might run up. So watch that one. We also had the quantum computing stocks run, which I've talked about in the past, although I will admit I did talk about them too early. They came down after I talked about them initially. They had a little bit of a run when I first talked about them. They came back down and they weren't ready to run, but now we're getting momentum. The quantum computing leader, IONQ, ran up 21% today. They have 500 million cash. If the quantum computing sector does really, really well, IONQ will perform the best, in my opinion, um, or it's, it's more of the safer you know, play for this quantum computing sector, in my opinion, although it's not safe by any means, but it's, you know, the, you know, it's a 1.23 billion market cap. They do have, I said, 500 million cash, and they did beat earnings recently. My top small cap quantum play, QBTS, finally bounced up 27%. Nice move, 73 million market cap. Watch this one. But QUBT, the one with quantum computing right, it's, right in its name, is lagging behind the rest. So if IONQ continues to move, you know, next week, Keep an eye on it. And only ran 7% on Friday when you had QBTS around 27%. So watch QUBT closely if IONQ stays hot. NVIDIA has been getting into the quantum computing game lately, putting more eyes on the sector. A little bit of extra here of what else I'm watching this week. I'm in watching MULN. You know, they do dilute a lot, so keep that in mind. They do have a reverse split coming a few months down the line. Not, I don't think they're going to be splitting anytime soon here, but in about a few months, they, they will have to do that. Unless they get to a dollar organically, which would be difficult. It's possible. You never know. But I'm keeping an eye on it. They did... Um, deliver vans to the University of North Carolina on Friday. I'm also keeping a close eye on HUBC. I want to see it bounce from right where it's at right now, the levels it's at right now, or if it gets to that low of 110, it's got to bounce there, or it's, you know, it's got to bounce off that a dollar level. So I'm going to be watching HUBC for a potential bounce here. It kind of fits the you know, the quantum computing sector, the AI sector a little bit. It's more cybersecurity, but it's kind of near that sector there. So keep an eye on HUBC there. 
make sure you join Moomoo with a link in the top end comment. And Moomoo is giving away a free share of C3 AI right now. They're giving it away right now. The one that's up, you know, hitting all time highs, C3 AI. Oh, let me find it right here. You got to sign up for Moomoo. All right, 21% right there. It's up $33. You can get a free share of C3 AI. Link in the top end comment. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Join the private Discord. That's it for me. Peace.